And thanks for joining us here on PM Express. Uh, we are still talking about Galamse. And tonight, we've been talking a lot about Galamse from all angles. But I must submit to you one angle that we haven't explored enough. But the angle that really has determined whether or not the NDC or the MPP, while they're in government, succeed or fail in a fight against Galamse, we haven't explored enough. And that angle is the political cost factor. The untold story of the Galamse lobby. The Galamse lobby is a very powerful political lobby. They can cause you to lose elections or win the elections. That is the reality that we haven't explored. And there's a reason that the NDC starts fighting Galamse and somehow towards elections, you see that the positioning is softening. And then you see the MPP do the same. The president, I believe, meant it when he says, I will hang my political career on the fight against Galamse. Not when he said that in 2017, shortly after he won the election, so far away for another election. It's good, easy to say. It. But when the political lobby kicks in and they start marshalling resources against you, billions and billions of CDs, millions and millions of dollars, you will realize that they are so powerful, they will cause your defeat. Every politician, every political party is in this to win elections. And so when that is threatened, then you know that the fight will begin to wobble. And so tonight, we're going to show you the evidence, the evidence, the numbers that show, that tell the story that this Galamse lobby is really at the heart of this problem and until we fix it, and we'll also show you research that has actually been done by reputable uh, uh, academic institutions that point to this fact, that until the two parties come together to say, we are united in this fight, and we won't play politics with it, and we'll allow the Galamse lobby to throw us about and influence one against the other, we should forget about winning the Galamse war. That is at the heart of my presentation tonight, and then we'll get into the conversation. So come with me. And why are we having this conversation? Yesterday, the president in an interview admitted publicly and put in the very, uh, you know, poignant manner that he nearly, that the Galamse, you know, people and powerful forces mobilized against him and that he nearly, they nearly managed to get him out of office. Right? And that is true. We'll come to what the numbers say shortly. And when a politician tells you that, you begin to understand why, you know, the aggression with which they started may have slowed down a bit, even if they're still doing something about it. So let's get into this. And I want to take you back to 2016, because I want to track for you how the parties have flip-flopped on the subject, approaching elections, and how both of them have positioned themselves to appease the Galamse lobby. Let's go to Nanado himself, the current president, in 2017. This is a daily graphic story back in 2016 that I want to start with. And if I zoom in here, the daily graphic reported, and this was in the lead up to the 2016 elections, right? This was the current president campaigning to win power. His positioning on Galamse at the time was not as brutal, aggressive as it is you know, in 2017 when he won. He said, MPP to regularize Galamse activities. That was their policy. We're not going to come to, you know, take you out and, you know, arrest you, destroy your equipment, ban them, as we saw happen. We're going to come and we'll regularize it, right? Because, and if you go into that speech that day, delivered in the Western region, he told the people then that, listen, it employs thousands of people. So we, we cannot take your daily bread away from you. What we can do is to help you, you know, regularize the illegal mining, right? That's, that, that was a softer stance, I must submit, compared to what, you know, was implemented in 2017. That was brutal. We, we, you can't do it. No, it's, it's just a no. I mean, forests were deserved, red zones. You can't just do it. If we get you, we arrest you. In fact, they even now... Um, increase the penalty for Galamse. So, and this was in 2016. I remember, in the lead up to 2016, John Mahama 
had been fighting Galamse, Inusa Fuseni, who was then the minister, uh, was, was also doing the same thing, burning excavators, etc., arresting people. 2017, 2013, uh, 14, going into 2016, that was John Muhammad's fight then. Also doing the, almost the same things his current government was doing in terms of arresting people. And I heard John Muhammad say recently that they arrested and deported 5,000 Chinese nationals involved in Galamse. So in 2016, before the elections, while John Mahama was fighting and aggressively, you know, Nanado was also talking, you know, a bit slightly more softer approach to the Galamse thing. The Galamse lobby was powerful. So what was the outcome when it comes to the elections? We'll come to that pretty shortly because that is so important um, to show. So did he benefit from that in 2016 elections? The numbers suggest that he did. In the mining communities, this message resonated with the mining lobby, right? Now flip the script a bit, flip it in 2020. Come to 2020, this is John Mahama. Now he is in opposition. He's lost elections 2016. Elections that Nanando, of course, uh, playing to the, you know, Galamse lobby had, you know, positioned himself, uh, I'll regularize it, you know. But in 2020, now John Mahama did to him what was done to him back then. John Mahama in 2020, goes campaigning on Galamse in the Galamse communities. And he says, I will grant all imprisoned Galamseers under Akufuado amnesty. In other words, all the Galamseers who had been arrested under Nanado Danko Akufuado's presidency during his time of fighting it, he was promising that when I come, well, I'll grant you amnesty. In effect, I will set you free. His arguments were very interesting. I want you to watch him and how he explained and rationalized this when he addressed the people in these Galamse communities. Listen to John Mahama then. Hey, I <laughs> hey, 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 the Omoko prison, and then make us say, Your mother didn't be at that prison, say Omoya Galam Senti. And so, Yakochi China Niba, I know your Galam Say Queen, or not yet, more for now, Uncle Jina Court, and for now, for two, most on there, Uncle Nikrum, and a way down the free or court, and so your mother, Omo the Omoda, if you ask. Amnesty, I mean, that is that is the, the politics of this. And I'm 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 submitting to you is because. The Galamse lobby is powerful. Omar Samba, I mean, will give them amnesty. And he's a rationale, if you let's interpret a bit. He refers to the Aisha one, you know, arrest and then subsequent deportation. He makes the point. If you arrested a foreigner, you are prosecuting him and you chose to deport him. Why are you arresting Ghanaian citizens of this land who are also doing the same thing? And you've chosen to prosecute and, and imprison some of them. Well, when I come, I'll grant them amnesty. So they return. That's, that's, that's John Mahama, and it's captured by the graphic then. I will, you know, I will grant amnesty to all of them. This is the lead up to the 2020 elections, and this was said and reported by a graphic October 22nd, 2020. October, November, December, just a few weeks, really, before the elections. That tells you a story in the lead up. Remember what Nanado did also in 2016? He was doing this, even going further than Nanado. Who, who said, I'll regularize illegal mining. He's saying, I'll grant you amnesty. If you've been arrested for engaging in the alarm, say, I'll grant you amnesty. I'll, I'll let you go so you can return. Right? So, uh, flipping the script here. While Akufado was fighting Galamse at that time, in the lead up to 2020, arrested a lot of people, destroyed, you know, equipment, banned them. The military was released under Amewu, remember? The former Lance and Natural Resources Minister, aggressively. Right? And then they had introduced this community mining phase of it. John Muhammad was campaigning and saying, I will let the people go so they can come back. 
That is how powerful the Galamsey lobby is. And so, let's now begin to appreciate what the numbers say. So, did the numbers support the various positions as taken by both him and the president? And, and just to illustrate, when John Mahama was in, in, uh, in government, a few things they did in the fight, right? They had an interministerial tax force. Remember that he set up against illegal money in 2013. And then he amended part of the law. Remember that Nanado too had amended the law uh, and increased the penalty, made it more, uh, introduced a bigger deterrent in there. But John Mahama also did an amendment to the law uh, uh, and introduced Act 7, you know, 03 to Act 900, which gave the powers to the security personnel to one, seize illegal mining equipment, arrest and prosecute uh, persons engaged uh, in illegal mining. Now, the numbers. Let's look at the numbers. The numbers tell us that if you look at the 2012 and 2016 elections, you only compare two elections to see what was happening, right? That was a time that John Mahama was fighting Galamsey and Anado, of course, was in opposition and campaigning to become president. You begin to see that, you know, in, 20, in 2020, 2012, you have for the NPP, you know, secures, that, well, I'm talking about John Mahama, 51.2% of the votes, 2012. In 2016, the biggest margin of defeat, of, of defeat here in our elections of 44.6%, losing 6.6 percentage points from one election to the next. And many argue that it's been a lot of this, not all of it, but a significant chunk of this was because of what happened in the Galamsey communities, right? Because Inusa Fuseni and Co. and the Ministerial you know, Tax Force Against Illegal Mining were fighting. The community showed and voted. And then you come to Parliament. That showed us a, its, own, its own story. 19 seas lost. John Mahama, 2012, 2016. The story of the numbers. And then you come to the President Kufado's own fight against Galamse, right? And then he comes to power after securing victory on the back of his, I will regularize Galamse uh, campaign, it wins elections, comes to power, and says, well, I am going to now hang my presidency. My political survival is going to be hinged on the Galamse. I'm going to hang it on it. I don't really care if I lose elections or not, which is really what he was saying here when he says, I'm prepared to put my presidency on the line. And the presidents introduced Operation Halt in different phases. You saw that brutal, you know, destroying, and it, it, it was uncompromising, and he was applauded for it. The media joined him in a campaign. It was, it was all hands on deck led by the president. Then comes 2020, 2016, uh, 2020 elections, which we see here, and John Mahama's reversal and approach to being very soft on Galamse matters and saying, I'll grant them amnesty, and the results is very telling. Yes, John Mahama lost in the, in the end. However, if you drill down, you begin to see that whereas he secured 53.6%, uh, I'm talking the Nanado, in 2016, in 2020, he lost ground by as much as 2.4 percentage points. A significant you know, loss of votes there, almost 500,000 votes he lost. And then you go to the parliament, where they, they now have a hang parliament, mainly for the evidence shows, and this is the evidence, in mining communities, he lost a lot of votes, the president. No wonder he lost as much as more than 500,000 votes. Now, let's look closely at the evidence. Let's drill down a bit more. These are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine mining communities we've selected to tell this story, right? And this will tell you a very, very interesting story about what it was happening in 2020, right? On the back of his fight against Galamse. So you go to a Memphis Central, a known for mining, and a lot of legal mining activity happens there. In 2016, John Mahama had 53% uh, percent as against Nanado's uh, 45. So the green is NDC, John Mahama. The blue is MPP, Nanado. 2016, 53.3%. 2016 uh, for MPP, 43%. Now come to 2020. What do you see happening here? This is John Mahama. He has increased his votes. The percentage has gone up to 58% from 53. That is almost 5% increase, appreciation. What is happening to Nanado Dankwa Kufado in, in that mining community there? He's dropped votes 
from 45% to 33, 39.66%. Significant number of votes. Wonder why they have a hung parliament. Wonder why he's lost 500,000 votes. The story continues. It's a trend, really. You go to Amenfi West. In 2016, John Mahama, 57%. Nanando, 42%. Come to 2020, John Mahama still wins. We're not talking about who win or lost. I'm talking about in precedent, in their constituencies, it is what is leading to the overall national picture, right? In 2020, John Mahama increases his vote slightly to 57.86%. Nanado, who then had 42% in the 2016 elections, has dropped to 40%, right, in 2020. You come to Elembele, and Elembele is interesting. Recently, they've been in the news because of illegal mining. The DC, who is my guest tonight, um, of course, was involved in the tussle with the police over some uh, uh, mining equipment, particularly excavators, two of them, that had gone missing, right, in his constituency. And he said, I'm fighting Galamse in Elembele, and yet you are targeting me. It was in the news recently. So it is a hotbed of illegal mining. What happened? What happened in 2016? 2016, in Elembele, the John Mahama had 51%, right? Nanado had 48%. You go to 2020, and John Mahama has increased his votes. Nanado has dropped from 48 to 43%. Almost five percentage points lost there. The DC knows this. Everybody else in the community knows this. And so there's a lot of tension there. I mean, we are losing votes and you still want to fight. Then this is the result of it. One more place before I move on. Takwa and Swayem. And Takwa and Swayem is the constituency of the current deputy lands and natural resources minister, good friend, John Rikuduka. And in there, another very well-known place for illegal mining and mining generally in Takwa. In 2016, Nanado had 62%, which is what you see here. Let me, let me expand this for you. Nanado had 62%. John Mahama had 34%. Now look at 2020. Nanado drops from 62 to 51%. He's fighting Galamse. Okay, you want to fight Galamse? The Galamse lobby will teach you a lesson. They mobilized significantly, according to the president himself, to get him out of office. He dropped almost 10 percentage points there. Guess what was happening to John Mahama? Almost all the votes Nanado lost in, 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 uh, in Takwa and Swahem, he gained from 34% to 45%. Almost the 10 percentage point Nanado lost, he gained that because he was campaigning in the Western region that, listen, Galam says, when you come, I'm going to give you amnesty. Now, this is what we picked up from the research. We haven't done this alone. Others have been looking at this. And if you go to the Cambridge, uh, university website. There's a very interesting article that we found that tells a story in Ghana. It was telling the Galamse story across the Africa, by the way, but narrowed in on Ghana. And this is what they said. This is what the article says on Ghana. A hundred thousand minus, sorry, 10,000 minus 10,000 votes. Politics and money in Ghana. 10,000 minus 10,000 votes. That is telling. They are holding almost your, your, the, the part of your body that will make you scream. 10,000 minus 10,000 votes. Do you, you want to play with that, that group? I'll come to the point we are making shortly, which is that unless the two parties come together, these minus, with their power, their numbers, they would cause what was happening in this trend I just showed you. Let's go to our own research from our own academics, right? The University of Ghana Business School did a policy paper. And this is one of the conclusions they came to. Galamse operators are aware of the importance of their votes for incumbent political parties and have often exploited the political vulnerability of those in power due to intense electoral competition during election years. That's what they came down to. And then they conclude, this for me is how I end, because it goes to what, where the solution is. They say, according to that article by the University of Ghana Business School, illegal mining has persisted in Ghana, not because of weak state capacity, we have it, but primarily because of political leniency and law enforcement corruption, and ends. Any anti-Galamse crusade that fails 
to tackle the political drivers of the problem is unlikely to succeed. And I am put on that and say, unless the NDC and MPP come together and have a common policy on this matter, and, and honestly so, right? And both sides can trust each other. This fight is, forget it. Because the lobby, extremely powerful. My guests are joining me tonight. We'll get into that. The DC of Elembele, whose constituency I isolated, is my guest. I want to get, I want to hear from him what the political cost has been from a very personal standpoint. I mean, and then Inu Safuseni, who led the fight. I want to hear from him too. And then Ben Efsin will join me. He's been watching these polls and numbers play over time. Does he agree that the heart of this is how powerful the Galamsi lobby is and, and the parties are afraid that they will lose elections in these mining communities? Because remember, 10,000 miners, 10,000 votes. My guests joining me after this. Stay with me. Joining me on Zoom right now is former Lance and Natural Resources Minister who led that charge as the Lance and Natural Resources Minister and John Mahama Inusa Fuseni is my guest on Zoom. Uh, also joining me tonight is Ben F. Singh, his poster election watcher, uh, managing news editor of the Daily uh, Dispatch newspaper. Uh, Mr. F. Singh, thank you for your time. Hello, Mr. F. Singh. Hello, Evans. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. I'm grateful that you could join me. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nusa Fuseni, let me start with you. Um, do you agree that the real reason why the fight against Galamse is faltering or politicians from both sides ha have not found a way to deal with this decisively is down to the political cost factor? Well, uh, Evans, let me say that Indeed, this evening, uh, the facts you've presented are very revealing. And at the time that I was given the charge of reading the small-scale mining sites of illegalities, I never made the connection. And honestly, uh, this... Okay, we, we've lost him there. Uh, we'll get him back on the telephone line pretty quickly because he lived it. Um, Mr. Fusini, we lost you briefly. If you can restate re, uh, the, the points you're making, we lost you briefly. Well, I'm saying that this is the... Oh, goodness, we, we lost him again. Um, that's what technology does to you sometimes. Uh, bear with us. Let me go to... Let me go to Ben F. Singh, who is joining me right now, um, and come back to Mr. Fusini when that line. Mr. Mr. F. Singh, wh where do you stand on that question? I mean, you watch elections year on year. Is this something that we are missing about the real power of the Galamse lobby and, and how they can do or make or make politicians through votes and mobilizing against them? What, 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 does, what, what does your own observation suggest? Thank you, Ivan. I think that once I agree to speak to you on this program, I think that I have to prefer to you uh, and your viewers that... Uh, you know, my seventh book on Ghanaian elections uh, will be out in about a month. And I'll give you some excerpts from the book. Uh, Galamse is a trade. It's a lucrative business. Now, supporters in 2020, supporters of the NPP, who, ben, who are active Galamse participants and who benefit, like they sell food, they sell clothes to Galamse communities, even did not come out and vote for the NDC. They were apathetic, very apathetic, and that was the cause of the loss of a lot of seats, especially in the Galamse area. One of the reasons why Ronaldo won by over half a million votes in the presidential was the inability of John Mahama and the NDC to properly articulate their views on what they will do with the free SHS. But Definitely, 
Galam still cost MPP some of the keys by the apathy of their supporters who decided not to come out and vote, Ivan. Th that definitely is telling. Uh, do I have Inusa Fuseni back? Yeah, Mr. Fuseni, yes, you were making your point. You lived it. I mean, do you agree that that is at the heart of the problem? Well, I haven't, I haven't watched the evidence, the compelling evidence you have given uh, on your show tonight. I think that there's def definitely a nexus Okay. Um, obviously, he has a challenge there with his with his uh, connection to us. Uh, we'll see. We, I definitely need to hear him his thoughts. He was a minister who led this at the time. Now, Ms. Evsing, so you, you're saying that if your evidence suggests and and proves the point that we've been we've been stressing. Um, but I that there's also this you know campaign that both parties do in the area. They, they know this, right? They know this. I mean, I wonder, do you get a sense that apart from people just, you know, saying, well, you are fighting us, we'll, we'll worry you. Are they invested in terms of putting resources in either mobilizing against you or for you, depending on whether they believe you are friendly to them or not? Um, you know, Three key regions determine elections in terms of, especially the presidential, central, greater Accra, central, west. Now, quite a number of the Galamse constituents, the constituencies are in Galamse areas in the western region. So, well, I think that let me just backtrack a bit. From my analysis of 2020, I think that. A third of Ghanaian voters are swing. One third, minimum 30%. It's only a swing voter who go to the polling station, vote for the opposition party's parliamentary candidate, and vote for the ruling party's presidential. So the hardcore MPP people who feel like grieved out of anger did not turn up to vote. The swing voters, out of anger, if you're a swing voter who likes Galamse or your participant, you will punish MPP by voting for the NDC parliamentary, and then they voted for Akufuado primarily because of the fear that Mahama and the NDC will cancel the first ticket. So that, so that is how even they punish the MPP the Galamse factor and punish the NDC for their inability to convince them that they will maintain the free state. That is how it worked out. Interesting. Um, Mr. Fusseni is back. Hopefully, his uh, connection will hold. Mr. Fusseni, you were making a point about, about this factor which Benef Singh is articulating that the, the forces within the Galamse are, are very, very powerful. Yes, oh, definitely they are powerful. I mean, you can't take that away from them. Gallup gives them a lot of money. I mean, people have sponsored political parties based on Gallup money. So they're powerful. They're powerful. I mean, they, I mean, when I was minister, somebody came to me, wanted to do Gallup I refused him. I said, I will arrest him. He left my office, joined the political party, and then had, had the license to do it. I see. You, you are making a point. I asked you the initial question, and let me hear your thoughts on this, whether this problem and, and the struggle that the politicians on both sides are facing to deal with it um, may be down to the political cost factor. Well, the, when I was given the charge to fight Galamse, I did not avert my mind to the political factor. And, and former President Mahama never averted his mind to the political factor. It's simply said, Inusa, lead the tax force to read the small-scale mining sites of illegalities. And then we are giving Ghanaians an opportunity to take advantage of the legal regime to take licenses to be able to mine. And that if a Ghanaian did not think that he would exploit that opportunity to license his activities, then we should prevent them. I mean, there were clear instructions. 
And that's why I'm saying that it appears to me now, listening to you and watching the evidence, that there is a nexus, there's a connection. Now, probably what we need to do is to see how we can free up the system and make the licensing regime quite easy and simple for many people to migrate onto the licensing regime than just taking the law into their own hands and behaving in a manner with impunity. Because obviously, your analysis and research, your exposition tonight clearly establishes a nexus. It was not available to me at that time. I did not see it that way. I, I and the John Mahman government just saw that what they were doing was catastrophic, was destroying our lands, was destroying our water bodies. We needed to do something about it, and we did. And every political party wants to win power to be able to effect some goodness or good for the country. And if Galamsayas are going to prevent you from doing that, probably we need to think through how to win their confidence that when we come in, we will not unduly disturb those who have taken advantage of the opportunities to mine in accordance with the license that they have been given. I mean, Galamsey is a multi-billion dollar industry. If you uh, listen to the, uh, I think the f former you know, uh, senior minister who I, I, I indicated that he had, he had traveled out of the country and he was told that uh, more than two billion you know, dollars worth of gold we can account for, which definitely left our shores. It, many argue that a lot of these, that uh, in that leaving is coming from Galamsey. So it's a multi-billion dollar industry. So they have money. Um, <laughs> with that money comes a lot of influence and power during elections. You know, our parties and candidates will love financing. Um, it, and the temptation is there if the person approaches you. And look, we, we are in this country, we know there are people in, in, in parties, positions, who have been alleged to be significant players in the Galamsey industry. And they come to that with a lot of influence. Is this, thing, is this you know, beast even possible to defeat? considering the wealth and the power are the hands of this Galamse lobby? Evans, we must not even contemplate that we have to give up the fight. Because the land degraded so far, I have uh, uh, research evidence which shows that reclamation of the land and the land going back to its natural state will take close to 100 years. Wow. It means all of us living in Ghana today might not see the return, even with, if we stop Galamsey activities today, might not see the full return or recovery of the land in our lifetime. So we cannot give up. Indeed, you are privy to a conference that we held that introduced us to the effect of money in our politics. And if Galamseyers are supporting political parties, then if you want evidence of money laundering, it is there. Because Galamseyers are doing an illegal activity. And any money tainted by illegality, loan, I mean, put into the political system, is laundered. That's money laundering. And so there are laws to deal with that. What I'm saying is that for the environment, for our own future, for intergenerational equity, we must be seen to be fighting this. And all political parties must agree that we have to fight it. There must be a template for all political parties to follow and fight it and not use Galamse as a political score point where people can use it to score cheap political points. And other than that, uh, we, we are doomed. We are doomed. Can you imagine when the river of Finn will go back to its natural state? No. No. Can you imagine what will happen to the people living on the river of Finn after the pollution of the water body? And so the natural cost that we incur by not fighting Glamse is more than any amount of money that we can get from our development partners. Hmm. Natural resource accounting alone 
the water that the people used to drink, which was free. Now, we are told by research that farmers buy pure water even to be able to mix chemicals to spray their crops. We are exacerbating poverty by not fighting galapse. And so I think, and I, to be honest with you, when I was leading the charge, I had statements, even from politicians, that it would be impossible to fight Galapse. I mean, I, I heard it severally. But I was convinced and passionate, having looked, I mean, having seen pictures of the destruction of the environment and the water bodies, having seen the exposure to hazardous chemicals in the areas that are affected by Galapse, having seen the insecurity children falling into open pits. We need to fight Galapse. I mean, there is no any other way out. I mean, other countries have done it. Other countries have done it. Why can't we do it? I mean, let, let me ask you, at the beginning, you, you make the point that when you started the fight, um, you know, political uh, influences came your way and they, 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 they sort of threatened you. Some of them joined the political force to... How did you deal with that? Um, how, did you, how did you deal with that? I was focused. I knew that the fight against Galamse was legitimate, that it was saving the future for the future generation, that as a minister, I had a responsibility to ensure that the future generation's ability to continue to live, to live on the land is not compromised by present generation. That, look, I was so convinced that if our ancestors had done the things that we are doing today, we presently on, in Ghana and living on the land might not have a land to live on. And so that was why, I mean, anybody who came to me, sometimes the, the the attack and threats were so enormous, the condemnation was so enormous or so great that I reverted to the president. Mm. I remember one time and somebody told me, a very high up person, if that person is listening, he will, he will remember, that the Atamilsis money that was coming from China, the three billion that was to come from China, that the only reason the remaining 1.5 was not coming was because I was fighting Galapse. Okay. So I was so alarmed. That's I was interesting. So alarmed. That's interesting. So this. Yes, was, so so what, what you're saying then is that even at that time, the people were linking Chinese uh, economic uh, support for Ghana to Galamse. Galamse. To Galamse. So I was so alarmed that I went to the president and mentioned the person who told me that and said, well, Mr. President, is that the case? He only smiled and told me, you know, sir, continue to work on cleaning the small-scale mining sites of illegalities until I tell you otherwise. So I left. But, but, but the money didn't come. It didn't come. And probably, if there was a the linkage at all, probably John Draman Mama placed the future, the future health and prosperity of this country on matters other than $1.5 billion coming into the country. I flew with him in an aircraft, in a helicopter, over the lands. And when we landed and we were walking, he continuously asked me, you know, sir, how do we reclaim these lands? And so, my brother, Evans, we are in deep shit. And let me reveal to you again. When I was courting the support of members of parliament to fight the menace, a senior member of parliament, and that senior member of parliament is still in parliament. He took me on at the committee's meeting, at the committee of uh, mines and energy, and thought that I was bonkers. I didn't know what I was talking about. But because I was so passionate, and when he said that, I, I, was, I was annoyed. I said he didn't simply understand. 
that it was, it was a social phenomenon and that we must fight it. I mean, he realized that mm -hmm. he realized that I was becoming annoyed. So he asked permission of a chairman to talk to me. So the meeting was adjourned and I followed him out. And he told me, Inusa, tell me what exactly are you talking about? The owner started explaining to him what was happening to the environment. He said, I didn't know that. My our, our fathers and forefathers used to just go to the riverside and put baskets and shovels in water, scoop the soil, and get gold. I said, that's not what we're talking about. You have no idea. And even you sitting in a crowd, your health might be compromised if any living organism that we in eat ingest mercury. And he became afraid. You don't think that you are immune. It could travel that far distance to your table in a crowd in the comfort of your home. Unfortunately, all the living organisms in the rivers are dead. Often cannot support life of organisms. It's dead. The water body is dead. So why do we do that to ourselves? Mm. I mean, you, so you... The, 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 the fact that you have put out these statistics means that there's a compelling reason for a new strategy on how to fight galaxy. Let me but ask you. Cannot... Mm -hmm. Let me ask you. Because you touched on, um, you know, how you, of course, and, and John Mahama stood your ground in the face of all this uh, political influences and, and threats that China will not give you the money. W were you surprised then when in 2020, John Mahama he became soft on the matter and actually campaigned that he will grant amnesty to those who have been arrested by the NADO and the Galamseyas and, and, and get them to return? John Draman and Mahama's statement must have put in context. You know why? And even now, the re-arrest of, re-emergence and re-arrest of Aisha Wan has brought into sharp focus our treatment of Ghanaians at the Galamsee sites. What he said in 2020 was that it was totally unacceptable to grant amnesty to foreigners who were engaged in illegalities and imprison Ghanaians. You were infringing the constitutional provisions. You were treating people differently based on status. That's discrimination. So simply his answer to that was that, well, if a Chinese citizen can be given amnesty, not prosecuted for an offense that another Ghanaian, a Ghanaian has committed and is languishing in jail, when I come, I will even it out. I'll give them amnesty. Mm. That was that was the context. It was not because he just felt that he should give them amnesty to go back and do the work. He was responding to a situation which clearly, clearly discriminated against Ghanaians who were arrested on the small scale mining sites. Let, let me bring but Mama, Mama has always maintained that where there is a legal regime that makes it possible for a Ghanaian to engage in small-scale mining pursuant to the laws of the country, it is totally unacceptable for any person to take the law into its own hands and, and act with impunity. That was why when five champagnes were found on River of Finn, close to Chichewere, the district chief executive lost his job. When, when was this? In 2014. The Duke was this chief executive. Call him. He will tell you. When we visited Chichewure, you know, there was a collapse of a mine pit at Chichewure, which killed nine people. Yeah. I went there in the company of Goblolate, uh, the police commander for Dunkwa, the BNI commander for Dunkwa, and the district chief executive. So after we had seen the mine pit, the dugout, I decided to go and see the river often and see its state because that dugout was close to the river. The river. When I when I saw five and I turned and asked the district chief executive, 
Why do we have these contractions on the uh, revolving? Don't you know that there is no law that permits mining on the water body? Even if they are put there legally, there's no law that permits mining on the water body. You can only put a, an equipment on the water body if you are dredging that water body. He couldn't answer. And I thought, felt that that was a dereliction of duty. That was why I was quite surprised that recently 838 champans, 838 champans were found on revolving and the district chief executive is still sitting in office. That makes me feel bad. Makes me feel bad. Mm, I wanna... when, you, when you are applying the law, you see, if you are applying the law to fight calamity, you must apply it with a, a blinded eyes. Two, you must en engage stakeholders. So there must be a multi-stakeholder approach. I mean, on that, on that one, I remember that when this new lands and natural resources minister took over, there was a big stakeholder event to get everybody on the table to discuss what to do about this. And they came up with a roadmap. I don't know if you were part of that conversation. I chaired the first session. Yeah. I chaired the minute after the president spoke, gave the opening address, I chaired the first session. Yeah. And there were distinguished personalities and discussions in that first session. And we were unanimous on how to deal with Galamse. We were, we were told that the, the resolution will be converted into a policy document with clearly mapped up steps on how to fight the Galamse so that we could all police. We are yet to see that policy document. Let me bring in uh, Ben Efsin quickly. Um, Mr. Efsin, so back to how to deal with this, having accepted and analyzed that the politics and the votes come to play here. What then would you recommend, it, it will be your recommendation to deal with this? If it's down to votes, is there even a solution to this? Ordinarily, uh, in a normal civilized society, normal society, you leave your house, you are going to work, 95% you come home. From some of the audio recordings of our researchers, in those Galamse areas, it is 50-50. 50% you come out alive. 50% you will die. That is the stark reality. I mean, if you're a cocoa farmer, somebody comes to you, asks you, Evans, on the average, a year, how many do you make, how much money do you make from your cocoa farm? You say maybe... 20,000 CDs a year, 30,000, okay? Here, yeah, I'm going to pay you 15 years money so that I take over your farm and do galamsey. Even be loyal to our, your, your viewers. Will you, will you turn it down? Yeah, that will make me sweat a bit, I must admit. Yes, that, 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 that's what happens. That's what happens, Even The people just go there, they say, look, how much... The house. Okay, look, I can help you build something for you. I'll take all this area. So for them who give up their land for the galaxy, even a survivor, and for those who have invested in it, they have to recoup their money back. So there have there has to be a balance. I mean, fourteen year old or a mother, a nursing mother, three months with three month baby, leaves it behind someone to take care, he's going to do something to get something for the week. And he goes there and doesn't come back. So it's a very tricky situation that I think that along the line, I mean, for example, John Mama's promised that he's going to release uh, all those who have been imprisoned. It is the swing voters who benefit from Galamsey. But they benefit like somebody who cooks, 
in the Galamse area, there was a downturn in the workforce, so they don't buy the food, those who sell used clothes and so on. It's those swing voters who vote hoping that he'll keep his promise. For the hardcore MPP supporters who are actively involved, apathy, they will just not turn up to vote. So if it's a very tricky situation, it's like a Russian roulette, you know, the bullet holes, two of them have bullets. Which one, if you fire, you'll get the person off. I'm grateful, uh, Ben Efsi. I'm grateful, Inusa Fuseni. And I think I take a lot from Inusa Fuseni's point. But, but, yes, Mr. Fuseni, yes, yeah, yeah. briefly, you wrap up for me briefly, yes. Uh, uh, well, I, I don't think that I agree with Ben Efsi when he says there should be a balance. An armed robber leaves his home going to rob. He has a 50 50 chance that he, that he will return home. Do we say we need a balance there? Mm. And I'm saying simply stealing the natural resources. This test. And apart from the test, they say moral hazard. And so we cannot correlate it. I think, I think that what we should do, what we should all understand, that we have a responsible, as dutiful and responsible citizens of this country to enforce the laws. No matter who is involved. And then ensure that we police the enforcement of the laws. Mm. But to, to argue that we need to balance it is to justify the commission of a crime. And, and, you make, the of crime. and you make the point I want to end with, which is that the only way out of this is for both parties come together have a template, I think you said, have a template for dealing with this and, and, let, and all the, let all the sides follow that template to the letter. And when the guys come and say we want to yes. throw money at you, reject them because you know the other opponent is going to follow that template. So we are all fighting this together. Thank you, Nusa Fuseni. Thank you, Benef Singh, also. Uh, we'll watch this on phone and enjoy the rest of the evening.